Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review for Invasion of the Blood Farmers. Sorry, I had glare on it immediately. I'll go ahead and show this to you up front. Doesn't that look amazing? This is no spoilers because I don't know how many people have actually seen this film and I don't know how many people really want to see this film, but if you do, I'm not giving you any spoilers because honestly it doesn't even really need spoilers because this is one of those movies that kind of walks that line of being just really bad, but then at the same time being like really fun because it's really bad. So make up your own choice. I don't know if that's your thing or not. I personally really like f films that are like fun bad. So this one really spoke to me. I found out about this film through um, the horror magazine that I get, Rue Morgue. They had a whole write-up on it where they're talking to the director who is very <laughs> aware that this movie's not good. Sorry. Fix my hair. Not like it matters that much. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so the director's extremely aware that this movie is not good at all. Um, I think when he was making it, he was assuming that it would be good, uh, but as the years, well, decades have gone on, because this is a 1972 film, he's become ex extremely aware that it is just not a good film at all. It was super low budget. He had to make a lot of kind of split-second decisions that are weird, and um, yeah, he's just accepted it over time, to be honest. He's really just accepted that it is what it is, which is really cool. That's a good thing. So... Um, the the overall idea of this film is that there are some druids who are trying to resurrect their queen and they need to farm blood from human beings so that's what it is it's basically these these druids who look like farmers this guy druids who are actually farmers who are just harvesting blood which i do have to say this movie is pretty bad overall, but I do have to say that the actual blood harvesting portions of the film are not bad. They're actually relatively effective because they just kind of like show that the, the, the people are like tied up or restrained or like knocked out. And then they just have like a tube that's hooked up to them and they're running like a red liquid through it to make it look like blood. So it is effective in giving you the idea that they're being drained of all their blood. Now, how people react to that they're acting not so great there are ones where people literally are like flopping around for like a long time and it's it's like way over the top with the flopping around but once again that's kind of one of those so terrible it's awesome things you know what i mean so uh i have some notes that i want to go off of um the acting is ridiculously wooden it's it's very very rigid it's very wooden the lines are delivered like people are taking a lot of time to think through the lines as they're delivering them. <laughs> so the acting is really bad. But to me, there are certain times in films where that, if it's a bad film and I'm already laughing at it, that actually enhances the experience for me, if that makes any sense. I know it's kind of stupid, but hey, that's how it works out for me. Uh, the blood looks terrible. The blood is a color that it basically looks pink. Yes, the blood looks pink, and um, I know I know there are a lot of films, especially decades ago, that they're using different things for blood. I know a lot of the Giallo films from Italy were doing like actual red paint because they wanted to get a certain consistency, a certain color on film. Uh, this one, they it, it seems like whatever they could use that was relatively cheap, because um, it's pink. It's <laughs> It's weird. I was watching this with a friend, and that's one of the things that bothered him the most about the film. He's like, it doesn't even look like blood. It's so pink. It's ridiculous. I'm like, well, you know, it's crazy low budget. Which, by the way, back in 1972, this film was done for $24,000. Uh, my buddy actually looked up a conversion with inflation while we were watching the film because he was interested. And that comes out to, I think, around about $140,000 today. Which, to be honest, that's... Still kind of mind-boggling that, like, basically $124,000 today would make something like that because it was so bad. Like, I would think it would be even less money, to be honest. Um, the blood, okay, yeah, the blood farming scenes are effective. There was a weird noise, <clears throat> excuse me, that kept popping up during the film, and I know that it was intentional. It had something to do with, I think, when the blood farming was going on, but it was like this this distorted, messed up, 
um, cicada type sound. And it was just like really like annoying. And when you heard it, you were just kind of like, what's going on? And it didn't feel like it fit in the film. It was more of like a, is there something wrong with the audio? Did something screw up? Like that's kind of what it seemed like. It was just, oh my gosh, it was pretty bad. Um, there, I, I put down one very small quote of this because it, it just gives you a small taste of what some of the dialogue is kind of like. There's this part where this guy's talking to this older gentleman and he's kind of like, oh, I, you know, I heard this really weird noise. And he goes, oh, probably just woodchucks. Woodchucks? Like, this is what I'm talking about, the dialogue. It's just so weird. And the noise he was trying to describe to him was clearly nothing having to do with woodchucks. It, it was totally different. So this is that kind of like weird, weird, weird dialogue writing. Um, the camera work was bad. I mean, there were times where the camera work was fine, but there were ones where it was just downright awful. Like, there's this one scene where they're in, like, a lab. <laughs> I mean, use your imagination or whatever they made a lab out of, but should be seen to be believed. Um, these two guys are, are working together in this lab, and one of them's kind of standing up, and the other one's sitting down. So they have the shot where they're, like, zoomed in on the guy sitting down, and then when the guy who's who's standing up is talking, they literally pan up to him like this. But when the, they come to the end of the pan, it's not smooth. It's abrupt. It's kind of like this. You know what I mean? And then they pan back down when the guy sitting down talks. And then it's like this. So it jars <laughs> the camera. It's terrible. And they keep doing that in the scene going between the two of them and then to end the scene they pan to something else and it looks awful let me fix my there you go it looks so awful it is so terrible and it's annoying like camera work that's bad like that is really 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 unbelievably annoying um there's a drawn out beating scene in this film where this guy's getting literally like punched and hit <clears throat> and the punching and hitting is not at all convincing. It, it's terrible. It looks awful. But the, fa the fact that it looks so bad and they chose to draw the scene out so much just gives you time to really focus on how terrible and laughable and awful it is. So it actually becomes very funny because they could have kept it like an extremely short scene and just done like, bah, bah. And you may have been like, I don't think that looked very good but it was so fast I couldn't really figure out if it was okay or not okay but when it was so drawn out like that you're like this is clearly terrible this looks nothing like a person getting punched and kicked and stuff it's just uh, but it's just stuff like that in this film that's like horrendously bad but fun and laughable at the same time watch it with some friends uh, the film quality changes during it that's that's a, a weird weird thing that happens with this the film quality changes legitimately. It's, um, you'll be watching it and you're like, oh, this actually doesn't look too bad. And then there will be a section where they pay, they cut to, to a new scene and the quality of the film degrades so much. And you're like, what is going on? Is this supposed to be like a different POV shot from some other creature or something? But then you realize because it keeps happening throughout the film here and there in random kind of places, you just figure out, nope. They must have used different film. I don't know. Just another odd thing that you can't explain. <laughs> uh, and then the final thing I have written down for this, the guy in this who plays the sheriff, my favorite, favorite character in the film, he wears sunglasses the whole time. And you can tell at numerous points that he's wearing sunglasses because he can't remember his lines. So he's reading his lines. <laughs> it's amazing. Like there's one part in particular where he's sitting at his desk in the, um, I guess the police, uh, the police precinct and he's sitting there and there's a clipboard on the table in front of him and he's wearing his sunglasses inside, which there'd be no reason for him to do this. And you can see, like, you can see a little bit, you know how, like, even if people have sunglasses on, if there's enough lighting on it, you can kind of see their eyes behind it. It's one of those situations. And I was like looking very closely and you could see, he's just like looking down at the clipboard, reading his lines. And even when he's reading his lines, they're horribly delivered. This guy is the worst of all the actors in the film, but his acting is my favorite in it too, because it's all bad acting basically. So, but 
his is the worst, therefore it's the best. Plus he has this like crazy thick New York accent that makes it even more fun. And uh, yeah, totally enjoyable. The article I had read uh, in Room Morgue, they were talking about that particular guy. Apparently what happened is that guy actually thought he did a really good job in the film. And then when he was at a screening of it and people were laughing <laughs> at his acting, he got kind of upset about it. So the director kind of stepped in and did a really good thing, actually. He was just kind of like, oh, no, no, I wrote the character to be comedic like that. So you, you delivered them exactly how I wanted. Good job. And he was just like, oh, okay, cool. And then he felt better about himself. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, good good job on the director. He did, he That was the right thing to do. So anyway, um, the reason I own this is because after I read about it on in the Room Org Magazine article, I was like, oh my God, that sounds so amazingly good that I really want to see this. So I checked streaming services, not there, which I didn't really expect it because it's kind of obscure. Then I checked uh, Netflix DVD because yes, I still do Netflix DVD. I've said it on some of my other videos, but um, I do Netflix DVD because they have a really large selection of films, especially older films. So I'm looking for a lot of older horror films like this one from 1972 and usually I can find it. This one wasn't even on there, which is kind of, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, they didn't even have that. So my only choice was to actually purchase it from Severin Films. Yes, Severin uh, is the one who put this together. And um, it's on Blu-ray. That's kind of mind boggling. It's on Blu-ray. It For the most part, it looks good. They did a good job moving it over to Blu-ray, uh, cleaning it up and everything. Um, this movie is one of those kind of has to be seen to, to for you to believe how bad it is. Uh, but the problem is your only option is really going to be to buy it. So um, I think it was like tw with shipping and everything, it ended up being around 20 or something. I don't even remember. So anyway, there are other features on this. You know, there's like a commentary with the director, which at some point I do want to check out. And there's also uh, some interviews with some people who are involved with the film. Um, I didn't get into those yet. I just wanted to do this quick, no spoilers review of it. But if people down in the comments, if enough people comment and say that they would really like me to do a breakdown of the Blu-ray, all the extras and everything like that, I can certainly do that. Um, I just don't know if people are all that interested and I don't want to waste my time going through everything and, you know, taking notes if people aren't really going to be interested in it. But yeah. So anyway, uh, I would say I recommend Invasion of the Blood Farmers just because of how bad it is. You may watch it once and say, I never want to watch it again. I don't need it again. But it kind of needs to be experienced, in my opinion, especially for people who like like crappy, fun films. So there you go. There you have it. So I don't, I'm not even going to give this a star rating. I'm usually doing like, you know, star ratings. You can tell this is a bad film. It's kind of not even fair to rate it because because the question then becomes do I rate it against all films in which case it'd be like a half star or one star or something like that or do I rate it as a crappy film in that case it would be something like a you know like a four because it's amazingly bad so I'm not even really gonna rate it so uh, but if you if you're interested Severin films has it Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe. can really help me out a lot. Literally takes a second for you. It's so painless. Uh, hit the notification bell. That way you know every time I'm putting up a video. And if you check out my videos like immediately, it can really help them gain traction, which would be great. Put some comments down here. Have you seen Invasion of the Blood Farmers? Um, I kind of wonder how many people who might see this actually would have seen it. Probably not many, to be honest. I had never heard of this when I read that article. So let me know. Have you seen Invasion of the Blood Farmers? Do you want to see it? Um, let's talk about stuff down there. And give me a thumbs up so you can encourage me and stuff. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.